Today we're going to take a look at how to make this dynamic text animation using Stardust. So let's jump right in and get to it. So for this tutorial, my comp is 1920 by 1080. We have a frame rate of 30 frames per second and a duration of 10 seconds. The first thing we need to do is apply Stardust to a solid. So in order to do that, I'm going to use Quick Menu. The nice thing about Quick Menu is once you have your plugin called up, all we have to do is hold down Alt and hit Enter, and it's automatically applied to a solid for us. Now if we scrub out here, we can see that the particles are going in every direction. So let's tackle that part first. The direction here needs to be on directional. And so now they're going off to the right. Let's go ahead and change the direction span from 60 to zero. So they just go in a straight line. And then we want them to go back in Z space. So let's just rotate this so that we're at 90 degrees along the orient Y. And so if I click off of it, we do not see anything but a dot because they're all perfectly lined up in the Z direction. For the next step, let's take a look at the example. We're gonna use an oscillation motion here using sine waves to animate this up and down and left to right. In order to do this and make it just a little bit easier, I created a, a script that will be free, that will be available with this um, tutorial. Just to help you get it set up, it'll apply the expression to the selected property and then also apply a pseudo effect to help you adjust the values. So let's take a look at how that works. So with Stardust, we want to oscillate our emitter. And to do that, one thing that we can do is we can attach this to another layer. And we can do that manually, but let me show you a little trick that you may not know of. I'm gonna reveal it in the timeline and I'm gonna select it. Using Duic, any spatial property that is selected, you can just click on Add Bones, and it's gonna parent that position to the shape layer up here, and the shape layer is a guide layer, so we see it over here, but it's not rendered. So right now, nothing's happening, but now we can animate the shape layer to animate our emitter. So let's take a look at the position. I'm gonna just right click it and do separate dimensions. And we're gonna apply the oscillation motion to the X and Y separately so that we can have different values for those. So with the X position selected, I'm just gonna go up to File and then Scripts. And I have a couple scripts in here. Let's just roll up to my recent script files and run Oscillator. And it's gonna apply the appropriate expression here. It can be uh, one dimension or two for this expression. And we get a pseudo effect up here with frequency, amplitude, decay, and offset. So right now, as we start moving our layer, we can see that uh, it's off to the side. Let's adjust some values. So for the frequency, we're gonna put in 0.3. Amplitude, I want this to be negative 225. And for the offset, let's take a look at this. So it's obviously going off screen. With the offset, we can increase the value and get it more into position here. So let's just make sure it's in a good spot. That'll work for now. Maybe a little bit to the left. We can adjust that later on. Now, just to make sure we don't get any conflicts with names, let's go ahead and select oscillator here and hit enter. And let's call this oscillator X. Now we can select the Y position. We'll do the same thing. And let's go ahead and name this as well. Oscillator Y. Frequency, we're gonna keep the same in case we want to um, loop this animation. And then for our amplitude, instead of negative 225, we're gonna do positive 225. And then for the offset, let's check that out as well. Let's bring this down. And this works out pretty well. We can see the path that our emitter is gonna take here. All right, let's make a couple other adjustments to get our path down. 
So let's go over to Stardust. We'll select the Stardust layer. And for the particle, we're gonna increase the life of this. We're gonna change it from two to five. And right now the particles are more or less just stacking up on top of one another along our path. So we need to also get them to move a little bit more. So let's go ahead and apply a force node. And this is how we're gonna control the direction in the X and Z axes. So let's go ahead and change the wind to something like negative 300. And that might be a little bit much. Let's see, let's dial it in here. And let's change the Y maybe just a little bit. And this is really just personal taste. And for the Z, let's go ahead and crank this up a bit so that they really get smaller. And so now we can get the wind a little higher negative value here. And let's just take a look at what that looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty good for our path. And of course, we can make some adjustments down the line here if we need to. All right, one other thing that we can do is look at the particle and look at over life and change the opacity so that when the particle dies, it doesn't just disappear. Let's go ahead and have it fade out. And we could add another point here and change it so it's a little smoother. I like that, that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add our text particle to this. So let's just select the text tool and we'll go ahead and let's just put stardust in here. So I'm gonna move the anchor point to the center of stardust and let's go ahead and move this into the center of our comp here. And you can see that uh, it's a fairly large um, text size or font size. Um, no fill on this. We're just running a three pixel stroke on it. And I'm running all capitals just so that it's a little bit easier to read. Okay. So with this layer selected, let's go ahead and pre-compose it. And I'll just call it Stardust Particle. Now, one thing about this being a particle is right now our pre-composed layer is 1920 by 1080. And when we get several hundreds of these copies going, it's going to slow our comp down a little bit. So we want the comp to be the size of the text. So in order to do that, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to come up here to layer and I have auto crop three installed. And with one click of a button, we can just get that crop down to our text size. So that makes it pretty nice. So we can actually just move this down to the bottom and turn off the visibility. And for our particle, let's take a look. Let's change the particle down here from a circle to a texture. And so under texture, let's change it to our Stardust particle. And for the texture color use, let's go ahead and put this on alpha. And by doing that, it's gonna allow us to colorize that text, okay? Otherwise we cannot. And so with the particle, let's go back to the particle and let's bump this size up to be something that we can read. This is gonna work the best. Let's go maybe just 500. Okay, so one other thing about this is that we need to adjust the opacity because they're way too bright, especially when we change the transfer mode on this. So for the opacity, we're gonna take that down all the way down to five. Okay, so we can start to see that we're getting something a little bit closer to what we want. For the transfer mode, let's put that on screen. Let's try that. And it'll work a little bit better once we get more copies. I'm gonna try and keep this a little bit faster though, so I'll avoid adding more copies just, just yet. Uh, for the particle color, let's go ahead and change the color over life. And so let's jump into the color gradient and let's just use one of the pre-existing presets. These are usually pretty good looking. And I don't know, I'll go with color seven here. And if we scrub through, 
starting to look like what we want. And we can see that it's a little bit hard to read. I can read this one a little bit primarily because I know what it says. So an important step here is to add a camera. So let's go layer, new, let's add a camera. I'm gonna add a two node camera and I'll just go with the 50 millimeter and say, okay. And I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard to uh, be able to rotate the camera. And right now the particles are not facing directly towards the camera and so they're hard to read. So we need to rotate it just a little bit a little bit goes a long ways here. And as we rotate it more, we can start to see it more. So it's a little bit of trial and error of getting just the right angle to where they're separated enough to read from one another, but also facing the camera. So I'm gonna rotate just a little bit more. And that's starting to look pretty good. As we start to rotate more, they start stacking upon one another. So we can come over here to the force and we can adjust the, we can adjust this a little bit, but if we adjust it too much, if we push the wind in the X direction too much, we're gonna kind of undo what we were gaining from the camera rotation, okay? So let's see what we've got going on here. So I'm going to rotate the camera just a little bit more. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and bump up the number of particles per second. And um, we can see how that's going to affect the readability here. So I have it on 300. And of course, uh, you can play with that a little bit and see Adjust it just a little bit more here. So it gets a little trickier. I'm going to bring this back down to 100 for a second. And let's get this a little bit more in line. So let's take, let's go extreme. If I go all the way this direction, right? Um, this isn't the look that I was necessarily going for, but since the nice thing about this is since it is 3D, we can get um, a lot of different variations on this and you can actually get some pretty cool looks like this right here. Um, I kind of like actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's a little bit different, okay? And that's just from rotating the camera and getting a different angle on it. So um, definitely move that camera around and have a bit of fun getting different angles on it. I'm gonna try and get back to something that I was going for. Yeah, I think. So as you can see, I could fiddle with this for a while. Um, at some point we gotta just move on with the tutorial a bit. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn off this shape layer so we can hide those crosshairs. I'm gonna bring the value back up to 300 Let's do a little ramp preview and see how this looks. And there we go, this is looking pretty good. So a nice thing is remember, since we have a camera and this is a 3D system, we can add camera animations in there. You can add uh, your favorite glow plug to it. Um, it's a pretty fun effect, especially when you um, really play at those camera angles and see the different looks that you can get. Uh, you're certainly not limited to just this one here. So. I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody makes with this technique. If you make something cool, shoot me a link. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.